Hara is one of the most popular subjects in comic books. Classic horror subjects like Frankenstein and Dracula, King Kong and Godzilla have proved their popularity over the years, despite their frightening looks. Most of us enjoy the vicarious kick we get out of being scared by a weird alien or a rejuvenated corpse, knowing that we're really safe. It's only a movie or a comic book. We cartoonists can accomplish the same effect with our drawings. Imagine, cartoonists have the ability to scare people. Just by putting pencil to paper and using our imagination, and for you and me who do the drawing, it can also be a lot of fun. We here at Joe Kuber's World of Cartooning want to thank you for taking part in this course. Listen carefully to Joe's tips and instructions and apply these ideas to your own work. And now, here's Joe. Hi. Welcome to my studio. This is where I work. This is the place I like being the most. I hope you enjoy drawing as much as I do. Yeah, I know sometimes it's tough. Sometimes the drawing doesn't come out precisely the way you'd like. But if you want to improve your drawing, I'm here to help you. You, however, have to make the effort. I'll be with you every step of the way, and we'll both watch your drawings improve as we go along. So, get your video, hand your workbook, set them up, and let's get started. Cartooning goes back hundreds of years. Even the great masters like Michelangelo did cartoons, that is, a series of illustrations that tell a story. The Egyptians used hieroglyphics to tell of their history. American Indians used petroglyphs, drawings on stone. Storytelling in picture form goes further back than that, to the time of the cavemen. They decorated cave walls with ritual hunting scenes, animal stampedes. Those were our earliest cartoonists. To begin with, you'll need to set yourself up a workplace so that it's both comfortable and convenient. Set up your drawing surface, whether it's a table or a lap board, so that it's at a 90 degree angle from your eyes. If it is not at this 90 degree angle, your drawings will seem distorted. If you don't have a drawing table or even a lap board to start working with, use the carton that your lessons came with. Just set it up on your lap and draw on that. Remember now, Keep your materials neat and near at hand. Uh, keep your sketch paper close by so that should you need it, you've got it. Also, I keep all my references handy in files like this. Set up your VCR where it can be easily seen and where you can operate it because you're going to need it to constantly refer back and forth between the workbook and the video. That's the way you're going to get the most out of this course you'll find that there is a blank sheet of drawing paper inserted between each lesson page in your course book. In addition, you'll need plenty of plain, letter-sized bond and tracing paper for practice. Remember to do all your rough sketching on practice paper before you put your finished drawing on the two-ply boards provided for your homework. 
As you finish each of the lessons in this course, you'll be sending them in to us one at a time for review, instructive criticism, and a lot of encouragement. Send in only the special homework page because no other sketches or drawings will be reviewed. The homework page goes into the pre-addressed mailer and it will be returned to you with our comments the same way. We will only review your work in sequence. That is, lesson one must be completed and returned before we'll deal with lesson two. It's essential for you to review our comments and instructions on one lesson before you tackle the next. Understand that horror, things that scare us, are merely distortions of normalcy. Horror is a subject that attracts and repels at the same time. It's like looking at a pit full of snakes. You don't want to look, yet you've got to look. There's nothing scary about an average person that kind of looks like everyone else. And there's nothing scary about a little bug, an ant. But take an ant's head, put it on a human body. A grotesque drawing must have some basis in fact. If you try to draw a subject, 
with no relationship to reality, the drawing's liable to look silly. If your drawing doesn't look possible or believable, it will not be scary. That's why it's so important to learn to draw correctly. Only then can we distort the drawing, exaggerate, put a monster in a conventional location that's scary. Follow these steps. First, study your story. Analyze it, because you're now telling a story. Get reference for backgrounds and locations. That's the way to make them look real. Then make sketches of the characters that you intend to use in the story. Close-ups, full figures, and details. Do a lot of rough sketches of your page layout. We call them thumbnails. Small sketches are a lot easier to judge for composition. Once you decide which of your rough layouts you want to copy onto your big 11 by 17 board, don't forget to allow space for balloons, text, and captions. Rough out the entire page in pencil, then ink the lettering and the panel borders. Then tighten the pencils, including details, in preparation for inking. Before you actually ink on your homework board, try some practice inking by placing the tracing paper over your pencil drawing and ink on that. A successful comic book starts with a good story in the form of a script. The script can be handwritten or typewritten or in thumbnail sketches. Some cartoonists write their own stories. Others have their stories written by another person, a writer. For practice, if you don't feel like writing, use a sequence from a book you like and illustrate it your way. Storytelling is the cartoonist's job. That's what it's all about. When someone tells me they liked the story I did and doesn't mention the art, I feel highly complimented. That means that the story was successful. My drawings have worked. Attention to detail, attitudes of figures, and good graphic composition. That's what does it. A picture can be worth a thousand words. Stories about monsters and ghosts have been around as long as people. Every civilization boasts their giants, ogres, and witches. And drawings still exist, done by cartoonists of that time of dragons, sea monsters, and wild beasts. Those illustrations are a good source of reference for us today. Things like sacrificial rituals, pictures of inquisitions, ghosts and goblins celebrating Halloween. Reference in art form is an okay source, but it's still someone else's interpretation of the real thing. Photographs and museum exhibits show it like it is. Even Godzilla's textured hide like some overgrown lizard lent some credibility to the creature. Start collecting reference. Clip them and save them in a file. Arrange your files alphabetically. That way you'll be able to find the material when you need it and you'll need it over and over again. Very often, a beginner cartoonist who leans towards humor thinks that reference is not important. 
After all, it's funny stuff. What difference does it make if the figure is a little off or if the background doesn't look too real? Totally wrong. It's more important than humor and fantasy drawings to make characters and backgrounds more believable so that the scary elements are more effective. Badly drawn cars, buildings, landscapes, and interior details will weaken the effect of your story. Here's how I go about creating a horror character. I start out with a normally proportioned figure, like this. Now we'll make some changes, like this. And this. And this. Just to make him real scary. Now let's see how far we can push it. See this tracing paper? I can try extending the weird aspects without redrawing the basic character. If I've gone too far, I can just discard the tracing paper and try it another way. If I want to use my new version, I'll save the tracing paper and add it to my original drawing. It's a good way to test out new ideas. Keep in mind that too much distortion can turn horror into humor or just plain silliness. Always try to maintain a balance. Try to see your drawings as others would see it. I call it looking at your drawing with a third eye that is the two eyes with which you're drawing and the third eye which is the one others use to see your drawing. Here's a scary monster I'm building by assembling various parts of different animals. I start with a man's head on a gorilla's body. with octopus tentacles for hands and feet. Twisted goat horns on his head. Weird, huh? Create your own horror character by combining different parts of different animals. Just make sure that the parts look right. Reference. A horse's hoof has to look like a horse's hoof. An octopus's tentacle, suckers and all, has to look right. Reference. The main purpose for the cartoonist is to communicate, to tell a story, to express an idea in graphic form so that the audience, the readers, must always be kept in mind an audience can relate to the most imaginative or horrific subject matter if the drawings are clear and credible.
Our drawings must be clearly understood, though not necessarily simple. With a smooth sequential flow, and in the case of horror, dramatic and impactful. See? Here are some details in creating your basic, evil, horrible, scary bad guy. I'll endow him with features to emphasize those characteristics. Watch, this guy has a satanic look. High cheekbones, narrow long chin, a goatee, slicked back hair with a widow's peak. They all add up to the look. Narrow eyes and vampire's teeth. See? He's tall, kind of slim, but no weakling. Even his hands are long-fingered. He wears jewelry, but isn't weak or feminine. Females can be scary too. Kind of a mix of horror and temptation. Sunken cheeks, see? Dark, deep-set eyes, white, ghost-like skin. Deep red lipstick, a bloody contrast. Her claw-like hands have talon-tipped fingers. Her sneering expression hints at a less than friendly nature. Think about what it is you want to draw. Concentrate. Try to feel the emotion you're going to draw. That's what makes your drawing work. Here's another example. A rougher type. His coarse features are encased in pockmarked skin. A flat broken nose, wide nostrils, yellow broken teeth, unkempt dirty hair, gnarly powerful hands, thick fingers, a crazed look in his beady eyes. Scary, looks just like me. How about Medusa, a woman? with a reptile's body and snakes growing out of her head instead of hair. In each example, there are varying degrees of ugliness, mystery, and horror. It's up to us to add or subtract to make sure that the character fits the story. What a horror character wears is as much a part of the character as his face and figure. It also tells the audience of the character's origin. In Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, the doctor dressed as a professional gentleman, vintage 1885. Mr. Hyde, his evil alter ego, also dressed well, but his darker clothing and posture were well, quite different from the good doctors. The Frankenstein monster was composed of body parts taken from corpses. His rustic clothes were also crudely sewn together, so it seemed. The electrodes in his neck made it clear that he was not our average man. Most people have a tendency to step back when confronted with a picture of Marley's ghost. The poor ghost looks so real, draped in a shroud, burdened with heavy chains, really scary. Location, the area in which your story occurs needs to reflect the same scariness as the character. The setting of a horror story must generate a response from the reader. Cartoonists should give special attention to rendering backgrounds like architecture, interiors, geographical sites, and nature. And additionally, consider the weather and the time of day. All these elements have a direct effect on the emotional response of the reader, especially for the subject of horror. 
Old castles are often selected as the location for horror stories. Dark, narrow hallways with torch-lit stone walls are proper settings for ghosts and goblins, and the damp dungeons echo with the screams of tortured prisoners. How many of us have actually been in those places? Not many, perhaps. But if we cartoonists do our job properly, our readers will feel as if they were actually there. You may ask, what's so scary about an old Victorian house? Well, if you see it on a hill at night, in a foggy mist, where only one window is lit. Well, it begins to make one edgy, doesn't it? Well, in order to find out what's happening in that window, you're going to have to read my comic book. <laughs> Abandoned farms, iron-gated asylums, an ancient cemetery, a derelict ship, all settings for some weird goings-on. Finish this scene with a moonless night, or a teeming rain lit by lightning flashes, or a snow-cloaked cemetery. That's the ticket. That's the kind of necessary attention to detail that will lend drama and power to your illustrations. Your style of drawing is a reflection of your personality. Your drawings look the way they do because they approximate what looks right to you. And since no two people are exactly alike, no two styles are exactly alike, that doesn't make one wrong and the other right. They're just different. Ten artists can draw from the same model, and each drawing will look different one from the other. And they can all still look right. Your style will change as you improve your ability to draw and how your conceptual thinking changes. Style is not something an artist starts out with. Style is the automatic result of continuous effort and learning. Sometimes, in an attempt to make a page more exciting looking, the cartoonist makes his design so complex that it becomes difficult to follow the story. A smooth, sequential flow of story and art is what we cartoonists attempt to accomplish. The page must look interesting and compelling, inviting the reader to want to read the story and still be clear enough that the reader knows what's happening in each individual panel. Varying the sizes and shapes of panels like this allows us to create different compositions and make a page look more exciting. A wide panel may be used for panoramas to give a better view and clearer understanding to the reader as to where the action is taking place. A tall panel, sometimes the full height of the page, can give the impression of height or loneliness. There is a great similarity between movies and cartooning. The main differences are film is continuous movement and action and it's enhanced by sound. Cartooning on the other hand involves selecting highlights of action and movement thereby giving the impression of continuous motion. Lettering and sound effects takes the place of actual sound. He was born in the darkest night bitten by a raging beast, infused with the evil poison from its dripping fangs. By day, he looks normal, like you or me. But every month when the moon rises, he feels a terrible change taking place.
terrible pains grip him. He feels his body change, coarse blotches of hair erupt from every pore. Suddenly his nose elongates into a wolf-like snout. His teeth become fangs. His nails become claws. On all fours now, he has become a raging beast, seeking a prey, another victim. In cartooning, you are the director, the set designer, and the actor. You control it all, and your responsibility is to tell the story, horror or whatever, clearly and effectively. Here's a quick introduction to inking, the use of pen, brush, and ink. Lightly shake the bottle and stir the ink before use. Ink has a tendency to separate when left standing any length of time. Practice your inking by placing tracing paper over some of the drawings in your course book. Ink the drawings with pen and brush. But remember, if this is your first attempt at inking, don't be discouraged. Practice is the key to success. Your ability to do penciling will increase as a result of your experience with inking. Now notice what I'm doing. I'm not, I'm not drawing precisely what I have pencil. I'm refining the drawing as I go along. I'm putting a heavier outline here with my brush, but if I want a more regulated line, I will do that with the pen. And make sure that when you're inking, that you're just inking on the surface. Don't dig in, or else you're going to find that you're going right through the paper. You'll snag it every time. Just relax. Allow the tip of the pen just to hit the surface of the paper. Now, if I want some more detail, I'll go back to my croquil, because the croquil gives me a real fine, steady line. Placement of lettering is also part of the penciler's job and responsibility. Use of the Ames Guide and lettering with the B6 and B5 nibs are helpful experiences for the penciler as well. After the ink dries, erase all extraneous penciling. Use the opaque white paint to correct any inking errors. Take your time with your drawing. Improvement does not occur overnight. Drawing every day for an hour or two is much more beneficial than drawing a full day only once a week. Hold on to all your sketches. Don't throw any of them away. Put a date on them all. It's a lot easier to recognize your improvement in your work over a period of weeks rather than days. Well, that's about it for now. I hope you've enjoyed working with me as much as I have with you. And I'm sure it's helped you improve your work, perhaps even more than you realize. Keep this video and course book a part of your valuable tools. Continue going over and over the material, and you'll be surprised how much more you'll pick up by repeating the instructions and advice I've already given you, and by practicing. It really depends on your motivation as well as your own personal effort, so don't stop now. I hope you'll stay in touch with me and keep working hard so that someday you'll realize your ambition to become one of us, a cartoonist.
This course is devoted to just one aspect of comic book work. If you'd like to expand your knowledge in other areas of comic book creation, check the back of your workbook for a list of other courses in the series. Thanks again for joining us, and we look forward to working with you again.